Going into MSI, all eyes were on Reckless to lead Fnatic internationally, but it was actually Caps who made a big impact at the event. Towards the end of their run, his roaming on mid laners like Talia and Aurelian Soul secured early lead after early lead, even against MSI champions RNG. In this episode of Blitz Tactics, let's break down just how Caps and Fnatic pulled it off. One stone at a time. <laughs> Against Flash Wolves in the group stage, Fnatic start off with champions that can brute force a late invade on the top side of the map. Olaf can chain Axis to constantly slow someone, Camille can start with E, and Talia's Q does a ton of damage at level 1. Fnatic heads to top, but Flash Wolves end up spotting the move with the ward and respond with an invade of their own. But what seems like a failed surprise is actually a win for Fnatic. Getting a kill or triple buff would have been just a bonus. Fnatic's real goal was to take top camps and pressure the enemy jungler to stay on the bottom half of the map. In other words, Mujin is forced into vertical jungling. This would be huge for Fnatic because they want to isolate the top lane. Camille is a phenomenal carry that can take over a game via split pushing, aka Fnatic's major win condition. But she needs to stay safe and reach her item breakpoints. Early on she's pretty weak and can be punished with good ganks. Now that Fnatic has forced vertical jungling, Camille can push comfortably without the threat of a gank. So Fnatic secure their top lane, now back to Caps, whose job is to keep it rolling. After dying to a skirmish in mid at 340, he goes back to lane, pushes it out, and moves into the enemy jungle. Here, he spots Mujin, clearing the raptor camp. Now Fnatic are confident that Mujin won't stay topside because he was spotted multiple times on the bottom half in the first 4 minutes. He likely just came from clearing Krugs after backing. Knowing this, Cap starts planning his next run with Broxa. They place two control wards to make sure River Vision is clear. Caps moves back to mid, shoves it out, and with Broxa's use of the Scryer's Bloom, doesn't spot any wards in the Flash Wolves jungle entrance. That means it's time to set their plan in motion. Note that Caps isn't even level 6 yet. He knows it's way more valuable to gank early and while there's this vision control. Plus, the fact that he pushes way faster than Zoe means he can pull off a roam and get back to lane without losing much experience. Over in the top lane, Buipo needs to hit 6 for the gank to succeed. This is where that Mujin info comes in handy. He knows he can push this cannon wave for level 6 because he's confident Mujin won't be there to punish, and he has backup arriving soon. He rushes the level, uses Hextech ultimatum to dive, and nabs a kill. A little later, Caps unfortunately dies a second time on his way to lane, but this doesn't stop him from making sure his top laner gets ahead. After respawning, he pushes out his lane again, and, noticing that his opponent isn't there, immediately moves to the top lane to make sure Orn is zone and Camille can get the first turret of the game. Because of Fnatic's early pressure and Caps' roaming, Camille gets ahead of her lane counterpart and at 10 minutes, Buipo is up 17 CS with an assist and first tower gold. Buipo also finishes his early core items, Tiamat and Trinity Force, by 1622. The average completion rate for all of MSI main event was 1819. With Caps on Aurelian Soul, the plan changes a bit. In Game 2 of their semi-final round versus RNG, they have the stronger early game jungler and Camille's hookshot. They use both of these to invade and force Zac out. Caps, in the meantime, quickly pushes the wave, drops a deep ward to track the enemy jungler, shoves all three first waves, and backs to get his Dark Seal to help with his mana sustain. From here on out, he can put heavy emphasis on isolating the top lane to get Camille through the early game. He roams at 320 and despite the poor execution on the dive, forces both summoners out of Orn and gives Camille TP advantage. Caps loses a full minion wave of gold and experience to get this roam off, but his sacrifice is done to make sure Fnatic will have access to their main win condition based on their draft. At 435, Caps shoves his wave once again and invades with his jungler, stealing Zack's Krugs and pushing him out of his own jungle, further isolating the top lane matchup. 
Once again, he gives up experience from the mid lane to make sure Camille is safe. At 7 minutes after grabbing a kill in the mid lane, Caps roams up to the top lane with Broxa to kill Orn and give Camille even more of a lead. At this point, Camille is 19 CS up and has a teleport advantage. With Caps and Broxa invading and controlling the top side of the map, Weepo can push in the wave before backing at 4 minutes, which gives him enough time to run back to lane instead of using teleport. All of this then allows Weepo to use his teleport advantage to teleport down to bot lane and punish RNG's push and grab an assist, further increasing his lead and allowing him to become a threat much earlier. At 23 minutes, Weepo is up 1500 gold on his opponent and completes his very expensive 2 core item build, plus Merc Treads by 27 minutes. Overall, it was Caps' play on roaming mids that allowed Fnatic to consistently grab leads in the first 15 minutes of their games. He often gave up experience, gold, and even used his own summoner spells to get his side laners and win conditions ahead. And it worked! With 6 matches on Talia and Aurelian Soul combined, Fnatic averaged the 1.1k gold lead at 15 minutes. They only won 2 out of 6 games, sometimes getting outscaled, other times not playing well in the mid game, but their roams laid the groundwork for possible success and is a great example of using early pressure in coordination with your win conditions. Blitz Esports releases new videos every week. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out.